Great. What's up? Today, I want to we'll have a more chill stream. We'll have a more chill stream. Not that the streams aren't chill. You get what I'm saying. I want to just open up this chat real quick. I want to be able to mess around with Code Llama. First, I want to research it a little bit. Let's research this together. And then I want to, so little background. I did a stream the other week. So I've been making a ton of AI agents. I did a stream the other week where I made a junior dev agent. Sorry. <laughs> I know you really, really, uh, you want to have that dev job. You want to go to that coding boot camp and get that 100K job, but it's going to get harder because this is actually, so this is pretty useful. Like logically, I'm so uh, what I'm doing here is I'm making this script to pretty much like, like assuming I have no developer experience, like how far can I get um, by generating co code bases, fixing bugs, things like that. And I get it. Um, none of this is going to be perfect. There's going to be, a lot of the code that these LMs generate isn't perfect, but, and you're like, hey, this is gonna steal my job. And I'm like, probably. <laughs> like if I'm being honest. Um, no, I mean, I I'm kidding for the most part. I don't know, I don't know if this stuff's actually gonna wind up. Well, we'll see, but like, if, if something that generates code is gonna take your job as a coder, without any of the other stuff, like comprehend, code comprehension, ability to communicate, ability to abstract and problem solve outside the, in a system level. Um, if, if it can actually automate your job away without doing any of those things, then your job probably doesn't matter because most of software engineering involves a ton of stuff that isn't coding. So when I say like, oh, it's gonna take your job, like I'm mostly kidding but there are people that are just code monkeys and yeah i mean you expected free money <laughs> not free money but you expected this to be easy <laughs> um i'm just being real realistic about it anyway so like in this script i wrote there's a few i have one that's like a react engineer that's that's probably the most impressive i have this other that's like this auto startup script you can check it out on my github uh, I should link that somewhere, but um, it's J wordy if you want to find it. So really, I'm like trying to figure out whether or not I can just automate out different roles. Like one's like this auto startup that's like thinks of startup ideas and tries to implement uh, MVP and React. And it has this loop to like figure out whether it's a good idea and all this. Trying to do it on a lean startup way. And then this is the junior developer one, which is like pretty much just so what are the tasks I did here? So writing tests, it actually writes tests really well. This is using wizard coder, by the way. It writes tests really well. It bootstraps projects um, pretty well. That's kind of assumed if you've messed around with GPT engineer. The GPT engineer is pretty good. Um, I'm going to adapt this to use code llama and we're going to just mess around with this with code llama uh, and see see well first let's do some research with code llama actually wait no it also fixes bugs which is actually pretty cool i find like relevant files with a vector uh, i make a vector db of the code base and then find relevant files and then say hey fix these bugs um, in the file the technical feedback one was meh, it was meh. And then this ticket sizing was meh, you know, it didn't, it wasn't that great at that, but also I think the prompting was a little messed up. But anyway, let's figure out if code llama is cool. As you can see, I already went to all these links cause I prepare. Cause I want to see like how good this is. So here, like the example is in bash, how do I list all text files in the current directory? And then it just like tells you to do it. And then it gives you like a breakdown and all that. But that's like, this is stuff that we already kind of knew ChatGBT could do. 
So I'm going to read this a little bit and try to figure out what's going on. So let's see here. Uh, you know, and by that, I mean, skip most of this and get to the action, right? Okay. Actually, let's go to the white, the white paper. Let's go to the white paper. Because we don't read here. I mean, we don't read uh, docs. We read white papers, okay? Readings for, for uh, squares. This is an anti-reading stream, by the way. Just kidding. If, if that offends you, then please go. I don't, I don't have time for you. Okay, so let's go and try to find the app. Yeah, there it is. Download the paper. All right, let's walk through this a little bit. First, I'm going to read this a little bit, and then we're going to figure it out. We're going to figure it out. So here's the abstract. In this work, we develop and release Llama 2, a collection. Oh, this is the Llama 2 white paper because I'm an idiot. Hold on a second. Code Llama white paper. So, papers with code. Dude. Okay. White. Paper. Introducing. I know it's on here because that's I read it before. It's not on here. So let's see. The AI blog. We're just, we're figuring stuff out here. <clears throat> it's more chill stream. More chill stream. Oh, research paper. Okay. All right. Back to it. So here, I'm going to walk through this a little bit. We're going to read this a little bit. We're going to figure out, and then we're going to do some experimenting and actually have some fun. So we released Code Llama, a family of Okay, little background. Llama is Meta, Facebook. It's their code LLM. I mean, it's their it's an LLM, an open source LLM that they have. I can do a lot of things similar to GPT three point five and four and all that. Llama two is the iteration on that that was released like a couple months ago, like pretty recently. Code Llama is a new model built off of these models and trained to be very good at writing code and utilizes a few different concepts to with rotary embeddings, uh, messing around with the frequencies, I mean, positional embeddings, uh, R-O-P-E, um, which was already used, but I believe they modified it. I don't really know fully how yet, um, but I looked into it a little bit, but wanna, we're gonna learn a little bit more about how it works now. And, um, and they do something to, uh, they do infilling, so more of a, a masked uh, approach where they actually try to fill in rather than just doing the casual LLM training on predicting uh, next tokens. It actually tries to be able to fill in uh, with this prefix, um, you know, suffix tokenizing thing. They try to actually uh, fill in content rather than... Um, which is interesting. So what I mean is like you have previous code and you have code in the future and it tries to get the code in between and it's trained using this methodology. So I think that actually makes it a lot smarter. And it seems to someone recently, I think is a little another background thing. Human eval is a um, we're just given backgrounds today. Isn't that interesting? Uh, human eval is a codex which is like the original model for copilot it's a codex way of evaluating code 
based off this human written data set of code. And it's been like the benchmark to test these code LLMs. And um, human eval is apparently it, this actually the 32 billion parameter version of code llama competes with the GPT four on human eval or GPT three. My bad. Uh, let me, uh, there's a post on Hacker News about it. I think today. Let me just see. Was that was that today? Um, whatever. Trust me. I don't think it was. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Beating GPT four and human eval with fine tuned code llama. We're not gonna go to that because we're already looking at this white paper. But that's fascinating stuff. Fascinating stuff. So. The um, cool. So that's hold on a second. Okay, oh, yeah, just make sure stream that's okay. But so that's really that's fascinating because like before we're gonna get into stuff, but I want to talk. Okay, I'm trying to talk, I'm trying to figure things out with you. Okay, I'm like acting like you're pressuring me when you're just like watching this. You're like, okay, just get to it. So. Code Llama is this um, iteration off of Llama 2, which is iteration off of Llama. And these are all open source and they're free to use, which is great. And Meta, we like Meta for that. Even though Meta, you know, it's kind of destroying the world. We like it for, the, for them for that, at least. <laughs> um, and yeah, you know, it's the whole social media families breaking apart thing. That's okay. You know, the politically uh, fracturing the brains of, of the zoomers anyway so <laughs> code llama is really cool and i want to mess around with it and i was talking about human eval yeah, yeah, yeah so let's talk about so they have multiple models okay let's just read this we provide multiple flavors to cover a wide range of applications foundation models python spe specializations uh, and instruction following models, code llama instruct. So they have a specific Python fine tuned one. That's so the one is generic, uh, the main one. Um, and then they have a one that's fine tuned. If you don't know what that means, that's when they get additional data set and they typically freeze most of the layers, um, most of the weights. And then for some of the output layers, it doesn't need to be this. It's, you can you don't have to freeze the weights, but that's how people are doing it now. Look up Laura and Q Laura. You do some forward passes with the data set, with a new data set to sort of keep the previous tr trained tokens uh, or previous trained weights and uh, kind of optimize it so that the following predictions you use aligned with how you're formatting your data set are going to be better fine tuned for a downstream task. So what I mean by that is they get a new data set, they train the model, well, this is fine tuning. So they train the model off of something fairly generic and it's powerful. And they get a specific data set that is like let's say just python code and then they but in a more complex way and then they further train the model so that it's better at specifically Python. And it's probably gonna be worse at other things, which is a, a caveat. Um, but the thing is that's compute um, optimized to, to fine tune models versus retraining the whole model from scratch just to do uh, the one thing. You, you create these general models and then you fine tune them with, lower, with a low amount of compute for the downstream tasks that you want. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this is a side note. I want to say your profile pic reminds me so much of Chiwetel Edge of. I don't know who that is. Let me see who's that. So I look like this guy, Chiwetel Edge of. Oh, that guy. You're, you're like, oh, you look like the slave guy. <laughs> He's this twelve years a slave guy, right? You're like, oh yeah, I saw this movie about a slave. You look like that. Guy. I'm just I'm just playing by the way. <laughs> um thanks. I think so. I think thank you. Um <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> so all right, so we're gonna 
Right. Well, let's keep talking through this because I like to talk through ideas before I just jump in. And I usually do it in my head because I'm like crazy. And then, but uh, now I'm doing it online. Like, I, like what I'm doing right now, I'll just do for hours. So now I'm like just showing the world. I'm like, hey, this is this is how I think in public. Okay. Um, he's the Doctor Strange guy. Oh, okay. I'm glad you can you can take a joke, Butler. That's cool. All right. I'm like learning how internet works, and sometimes people are either crazy or they're cool. So it seems like you're cool. Um, Doctor, I've never seen Doctor Strange because I'm not like I. I feel like that's a little too, like, weird. The movie's too weird. Like, there's, like, I'm, and I'm weird, obviously. Like, look at what I'm doing right now. But, like, when I'll see the movies like Doctor Strange, I'm like, oh, that's, like, a little too much. Like, he's in a cave. He has a cape. He's a grown man in a cape. Very suspicious. Very suspicious. Like, don't trust grown men in capes. Like, what do you know, Sferatu? Anyway, so, so yeah, all right. So we have Code Llama. The so I'm gonna skip a little bit of this introduction a little bit, and I actually want to get to because I read this a little bit before. Right? I want to get to this. So these are the three. We'll give a little in their words. We'll give it a little context. So our approach is based on gradually. Uh, okay. While most LMs for code generation, such as alpha code, encoder, star coder, which is great. Um, I was messing around with wizard coder, which is a variant of star coder using a vol instruct. If, please actually look up self-instructing in the a vol instruct in your free time, because that's very important, both of those things. Okay, so the, uh, so now, this so they're saying is trained on code only co was fine tuned so so they're saying that like th they're tip typically ai models are just trained for code only like these code generation lms the open source ones and they're saying theirs is different because theirs is fine tuned um like codex from a general language model so they say we also like codex start from a foundation model and pre-trained on and pre-trained on general purpose text and code data. Um, our comparison shows that initializing our model with Llama 2 outperforms the same architecture trained on code only for a given budget. Okay, they have an example of a prompt and the, the response, which you know has like some good human-like uh, response with the code. So infilling. This is really cool. So they're like autoregressive training and fine tuning of LLMs is suitable for prompt completion, but does not provide the capability to fill a missing portion of text while taking the full surrounding context into account. Our code training for the 7 billion and 13 billion code llama models, the two smaller models, features a multitask objective consisting of both autoregressive and casual infilling. Autoregressive being this this generative predict this predictive um sequential uh training where it's all just based on previous so it's all the previous time it's it's just continually generating tokens in the future whereas um let's just think of the context window as like a as a time basis and so they're saying that um they they have multitask objectives so they train it to be auto aggressive which we're used to and also for it to do casual infilling prediction, enabling applications such as real-time completion and source code editors or doc string generation. Um, our ablation study shows that infilling capabilities come at low cost and code generation performance for a given, okay, uh, compute budget. Cool, so they're, they're pretty much, we talked about it a little bit. So one really cool thing about this is there's a, um, they don't, they make it very easy to fill in code, which would be a very interesting because what if you have, what if you could just write out the scaffolding for your project and not write in the content for any of the functions and you could have a model that's trained to just fill in functions continuously, but not just isolated, but taking into account these, all the functions in the file. 
that that's really cool right um and then you could write write tests automatically for for these and then test the the functions as you're writing the function i think that's cool uh, I, feel, I feel like there's a lot of ai doomers with code i think all this is awesome i'm like this for me whenever anything gets automated and this is really important i think in your career whenever anything gets automated you become more powerful personally in, in an individualistic perspective you get more powerful and if your mentality isn't that and your mentality is the owner of, of you gets more powerful instead of you you're not going to be in a position of strength there it's a bad position you need to be the first to utilize automation. In fact, you, you need to be the one automating your job. For real. Because when you when you can automate certain tasks, you can be the first to think about thinking the abstract. And when it comes to if you're in a division of people that are problem solvers, if you're the first to abstract something and solve problems in the abstract, so like I'll give an example. Like you're a uh you're working on a on like a um, a media company, and you have some division where you guys make tools for the content creators, like the the writers or the the video edit editors or the video producers or whatever. And if you guys have a tool to maybe look up tweets or something automatically for for the your newsroom or or whatever, and Everyone's like, oh, that that's cool. That really automated the process of us doing that. And you solve that problem. You could be the first one to think, oh, what happened? Now we have to manage this tweet retrieval system. And oh, wait, we have a tweet retrieval system. That, that means we need to build up all the our infrastructure for a retrieval system. Okay, now we need to actually have a information retrieval division. We need to like that's that might be too much for that scenario, but like what I'm saying is, the more you start problem solving in the future in the abstract, the, the more you're going to be useful and competitive. Okay, so it's not a matter of um, it's very simple to just be like, oh, oh no, like I can't write tests anymore because the AI does it, and that's my job. It's like okay, now there's going to have to be some sort of provisioning for AI generated code. Maybe you solve that problem first you know what i'm saying like you gotta lean into things because and you could say oh well like it's not actually generating any good code it's like now I've, I've seen in the past six months it go from generating okay code to much better code and we're gonna explore that today with code llama so it's like are you sure like it's tons of people that they use ChatGPT to generate simple stuff now you can say oh that's all it's good for it's like are you sure think two steps ahead you know what i mean okay so long input context you know what i mean I'm not trying to I'm not trying to I, I get it i get it i'm not trying to say like there's no repercussions in your life from things getting automated i'm saying you gotta operate in a position of strength okay long input context this is awesome so unlocking repository level so entire project level reasoning um for completion or synthesis so what they're saying is they've done they've done something to make it so this llm can have some sort of comprehension about the entire code base okay which is cool as opposed to function level or file level requires <clears throat> prompting the model with much longer context than the 4096 token supported by llama 2 we propose an additional fine-tuning stage that extends the maximum content length from 4096 tokens to 100,000 tokens a little suspiciously high but um <laughs> by modifying the parameters of the rope positional embeddings so the rotational positional embedding. So they, to keep this like relative and general positioning, well, first look at what positional embeddings are um, in the transformer model, but they apply these rotary uh, matrices to the positional embeddings so that they can 
sort of optimize. Well, I'm not, by the way, not fully like an expert on this, but this is for, from my understanding. So they can maintain the its position in a relative context and keep the absolute positioning in the whole context window for these tokens. Um, yeah. So they're applying like some dimensionality to it that makes it so it can keep relative and in, in, in absolute positioning. That's my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, okay. So our experiments show code llama operating on very large contacts with a moderate impact on performance on standard coding benchmarks. Cool. So we want to read a little bit about that more instruction fine to me. For end users, the utility of LMs is significantly improved by instruction fine tuning, which also helps prevent unsafe, toxic, or biased generations. Code Llama instruct, so so they made a an instruction fine tuned. Uh, the uh, and yeah, they did the whole toxic bias thing, which obviously no one likes that. You know, it's hard to for a lot of these uh, models. If you do, probably not the space for you, but like. A lot of these models that are like trained to be like detoxified, like they wind up just sounding like HR and it just, it just makes it, it like, I understand they're trying to like, they're trying to be good with it and cover their, their A's. But, um, I just, uh, like, I feel like if there's anything to be done to safely build AI, it doesn't have to do with hurting people's feelings. As much as it, it it's um, a matter of like maybe don't like unleash AIs to like manipulate people's content feeds, you know what I mean? Which is funny because I actually have an, an idea to experiment with that. So maybe I'm being a little hypocritical, but I have an idea to do uh, to have heaven ban people in a video. But I want to show you how it's done so you can see it once people once it's done to you. Okay, I have a I have a, a use for that. Uh, that'll be a fun video. Um, I need I would need to plan that a little bit more. Anyway, so our results show that the instruct significantly improves performance on various truthfulness, toxicity, and bias benchmarks at moderate cost in terms of code generation performance. Uh, different combinations of these approaches. Okay, cool. So here's the is this like, can you like see this? Hold on. So I don't, I don't, I don't know if, if you can see that, but like, so it's a very important graph. If you want to look into code llama, this is very interesting. Well, it's, it's very simple, but this is like super high level view of their fine tuning process. They have their th three foundation models for llama two and they have the 7 billion parameter, the 13 billion parameter, the 34 billion parameter. We're going to assume that more pr parameters means that it's going to perform better, right? Um, but you need more compute to, and it's going to load up far. It's going to require a far larger memory bus on the GPU to process each of these. Um, so or as the parameters get higher, like I think you're going to need like for 7 billion, it's probably going to be like, 15 gigs, 13 billion is probably 30 something and 70 or 34 is probably like 70 to 80 something um, for you for like gigs on your GPU. Uh, but, you know, but that you should be lo trying to load, load these up in a quanti quantized uh, fashion so that it doesn't have to be that bit large. Okay, so code trading and filling. So they do the infilling trading first. And so that's the inf infilling training is for everything. And that seems to be the most fundamental change in the code llama is that it does this masked, uh, casual masked training where it fills in tokens uh, and within a context on both sides rather than auto aggressively. So that seems to be the foundational thing that makes Code Llama different here. Uh, that's the first thing that happens, all these models. And then they have a Python training, code training one. Um, and what is the 100 billion? Is it, I think that's the number of tokens it goes through, I think. So the 
Yeah, and then that, and then they do the long, so they, they do the long context fine tuning for everything as well, but they do that after, um, in the Python code training, they do it after it's trained to on more Python. Um, and then that's it. So the Python is the infilling, the Python training, and then the long context fine tuning. The general code llama one is just the, the long context fine tuning. So there's no Python code training and the instruction fine tuning does the code training, the long context, and then it does instruction fine tuning after the fact. <clears throat> so the instruction fine tuning is just a downstream task at the end of this, this pipeline. Okay, cool. So that's that. So the data set, this is very important. So we train, okay, those are tokens. So they, so they're, they're like, we train, uh, hey, what's up, Florian? Yeah, we're, so right now I'm just talking through Code Llama because I need to learn more about it and I need to also experiment with it a little bit um, and explore, figure it out. So Code Llama is trained on 500 billion tokens during the initial phase, starting from 7 billion, 13 billion, blah, blah, blah versions. So Code Llama is trained predominantly on a near deduplication data set of publicly available. So they try to have a very unique uh, data set in terms of each item. So 8% of the sample data is from natural language data sets related to code. The data sets contains many discussions about code and code snippets, which is interesting because it's from a foundational model that just knows how to talk, right? Before it's not like the other open source language models. So it's trained on a lot of conversations about code, which is interesting because it's probably how you're going to be interacting with this to try to generate code, right? Um, so the data is tokenized via byte pair encoding, uh, employing the same tokenizer as Llama and Llama 2. Cool. Preliminary experiments suggest that adding batches uh, sampled from our natural language data set improves the performance of our... Hold on a second. I forgot what this is. Byte pair encoding. <clears throat> I got. I gotta learn. I gotta. It's a lot of stuff to keep up. Okay. Tokenize the combine both tokens and code single. Oh, okay. So this is a way. So it looks like it's tokenized. It's tokenized single characters and the whole words. I'm guessing that are in these in by in engrams okay suppose the data is, is encoded like this the byte a, a pair occurs oh okay oh interesting so it just it encodes characters within whole words like that I'd like to see how that gets that's used, obviously. Um, I know that that's used in a lot of L. I think that's in every LM now. I don't, I don't really know. Um, code and filling is a task of predicting the, the missing part of a program. Yeah, yeah, so we talked about that enough. Uh, so they do casual masking where parts of a training sequence are moved to the end and the reordered sequence is predicted autogressively. Uh, that's cool. Okay, so we train. I believe that's like a BERT thing. We split dot training documents at the character level into a prefix, a middle part, and a suffix with the splitting location sampled independently from a uniform distribution over the document length. We apply this transformation with a probability of 0 0.9 and, the, and two documents that are not cut across multiple model contexts only. We randomly format half of the splits in the prefix suffix middle format and the other half compatible with suffix prefix middle format. We extend Llama 2's tokenizer with four special tokens that mark the beginning of the prefix, the middle part or the suffix, and the end of the infilling span. I'd, I'd like to see a visual of this. Visual learn. To limit the distri distribution shift between autoregressive and infilling training, we suppress the implicit leading space that we concatenate the prefix and middle part before encoding to tokens da, 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 da. downstream okay so it seems like they just have this way 
And the reason why it seems like I don't really know what middle part is, but I'm assuming that's just anything that is in the prefix and suffix to these uh, tokens. So they they just split the documents into a prefix, a middle part, and a suffix, and um, and they do that at the character level, and uh, and then they have a suffix, prefix, middle. It seems like, and then they just that that's a part of the infilling is to. Uh, um, is to sort of like figure out what the, I'm assuming figure out what the suffix and what the prefix and what the middle is. Okay. And then the long context fine tuning, let's see. I'm assuming that's a compression technique to fit more tokens into the context length. Uh, the byte pair encoding. I think so too. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that, that, uh, pretty sure that is. BTW. Why is my why is my my brain messed up from texting? Yeah, I think you're right. I think that is compression. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, that makes sense. So it's just finding these commonly incur occurring uh, characters and just in then encoding that, and then it'll store that encoded character. Yeah, that makes sense. Why well, that would that would help the um, the long context windows. Okay, cool. So effective handling. I'm wondering why it would. Uh, wondering how extensive that is, and if you can over compress it. I'm sure you could. And I'm, I just don't know how you would evaluate that. Effective handling of long sequences is a major topic of research. Yeah, okay, and the fundamental. Okay, I don't want to just say. I want to say the important stuff yeah they're, they're pretty much saying like um whenever there's a sequence length greater than training time uh it just messes up so we propose a dedicate uh, this is really interesting this part with the the uh lo the long context fine tune. this is really interesting and and this is stuff where figuring this stuff out for yourself when you're fine tuning or when you're creating your own models, I think is super, because it seems like when I, as I'm reading all these LMs coming out and self-educating myself about it, how they figure out the long-term, short-term memory issue and the, the contact, the, how they deal with positional embeddings and rotary embeddings themselves seem like the most important part of this. I'm just realizing, yeah, that like this, this is super important, but, um, just for the future of this of this space. So we propose a dedicated long context fine tuning stage in which models are presented with sequences of 16,000, around 16,000 tokens up from the 4,000. You know, what's interesting is I'm sure after 16,000, it gets substantially worse, even though they say 100,000, but based on, it seems like they do use sequences of 16,000 and they might be under the assumption that there it gets into some like state like that's that's big enough that it gets to a point where you could like at a at hundred thousand it's not so much different because sixty thousand so much if that makes sense like it's it i'm guessing they're assuming it's like a logarithmic uh like that's the point in which it reaches that maximum of sixteen thousand, and that's why they're kind of saying a hundred thousand is good because they probably tested a few things on a hundred thousand tokens I say minimum at maximum, but um, yeah, I, I just think uh, that's probably not true. <laughs> I, we can experiment and try to do something that's like try to read a code base. Actually, let's do that. Let's try to read a, a really big code base. That's definitely going to be more than 16,000. Hey, dorks. Hey, what's up, Jack? Jack, you picked a weird stream to get on. This is like a pretty heavy engineering stream. Um, yeah, we're, we're discussing code llama right now. Experiment. Wait, Jack, did you see, I got a uh, 425 deadlift today, which is pretty, pretty crazy for, for me. Like I was like, I was stuck at, uh, like 405, 415 for a while. And I was just like, fuck it. And I was like, oh wait, that wasn't that bad. I mean, it was like hard. Um, anyway, so. 
uh, by limiting the training time spent. So they use this 16,000 token window, which as I'm saying, I'm guessing that that's some sort of maximum in which after that, because because they didn't train it on 100,000 tokens, like context window. That's just, I don't know why they're saying that that's, it can do that, but we'll, we'll see what they mean by that. But um, yeah, well, it looks like they say, well, let's get, let's get to that point. Let's get to that point. How tall are you? Around 5'11". And I'm like skinny. So I'm like, I'm like, uh, like, I'm typically in the 170s, but right now I'm like, probably like 165. Can you tell me how to fine tune an LLM on a free tech, some kind of unsupervised task? Um, yeah, well, I do. I got a ton of videos on that. Look up all my fine tuning videos. Um, okay, so let, let me let me see where am I at here? But I'll, I'll go. On, I'll go on the fine. If I'll go on the fine tuning, you got it. Look up uh, tutorials on Q Laura Laura. Research, please research, please research Q Laura and Laura if you want to know more about fine tuning. You got to, please, please. Okay, so a strategy is similar to. Let's see. By limiting the training time. Our strategy is similar to the recently proposed fine tuning by positional interpolation. And we confirm the importance of modifying the rotation frequencies. Okay, this is important. So they use this rotary positional embeddings that's used in the previous LAMA 2, right? Okay, and then they say, however, instead of downscaling frequencies linearly, we change the base period for which they are derived specifically with rotary embeddings, the key, the query and key vector at position N are subject to a linear transformation. Uh, and then they say where R theta, blah, 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 is a, is a block diagonal matrix with entries of the form. And this is the rotation matrix. And D denotes the embedding dimension, rotation frequencies are computed as and we increase the base period from 10,000 to a, hundred, a million for fine tuning. This increase allows for process, processing much larger sequences and reduces bias towards short distance attention. Our experiment confirms that code llama models are not only effective within the increased sequence length used during fine tuning, but further show extrapolation capabilities and exhibit stable behavior on very long sequences up to 100,000 tokens. So let's go into Rot rotary position embeddings. This is very important. There is a rotary position embeddings is a new type of position encoding that unifies absolute and relative approaches and encodes absolute positional information with a rotation matrix and naturally incorporates explicit relative position dependency and self attention formulation. ROPE comes with valuable properties such as flexibility of being of being expand to any sequent <laughs> sequence lengths decaying intertoken dependency with increasing relative di distances and capabilities of equipping uh, I'm just like saying it out loud right now <laughs> of equipping the linear self attention with re relative uh, positional encodings the motivation is simple for vectors q the query and the, the key vectors at positions M and M, we would like the inner product of the two vectors to only depend on Q, Q K, and K and their relative distance M minus N. Okay, so really what this means is the rotary position is applying this rotation matrix, this one right here, and it's applying that to the the uh, Q in the in the key in the K. So that's the query in the key, which query key value is pretty much how attention works. In which you have these three vectors, in which you're training to each with its own purpose um, to pretty much figure out how to find 
the most matching token um, as you're training. Um, ask ChatGPT to explain like this. Yeah, yeah, I actually 100% should do that. If you have time between, can you just give me a gist of Q Laura, Laura, just a few lines? Yeah, <laughs> I should ask ChatGPT to explain this. But like, but it's interesting because uh, I want to, there's a really good graph on this. I want to find because you get to, as you're training, keep the, that like, where is it? You get to keep the relative pos position while training this like rotary um, vector, which is, which is actually dealing with the absolute position. Really, so that each token, as you're you're using the the Q and the and the the K, each token can can be can be its relative context and the greater context at the same time. If that makes sense. Um. Anyway, so that's cool. And th what they're doing is that they're pretty much saying that there's this decay to that that's been that's done on this right here, this Chen thing. And they don't like they mess with the decay for that value, which is which is interesting. Oh, yeah. So Q Laura and Laura. The gist is you pretty much have this. Uh, so the way fine tuning was traditionally done is for every layer in the neural network they would update all of the weights with um, the new data set, which obviously is very intensive as LLMs get bigger and bigger. So LoRa is first this idea of utilizing just the independent matrices. So they compress the matrices with various like matrix uh, with this um, low rank adaptation. So pretty much like it just finds all the, it just gets columns that are independent with independent information from the matrix. The thing about matrices are just information, right? So they just find ways, the independent uh, values there that aren't dependent on other uh, values. So you can, so it retains the information as much as it can. And what it does is it updates the, the weights with these, um, low rank adapted uh, matrices and and yeah so the forward passes are way more optimized right because the weights the the reason why gpus are need to uh be super big in terms of memory that the memory bus is because and, and this isn't the same for gaming in fact you can have a gaming laptop on a with that with way less memory than um ai is because you need to be able to to handle a ton of different registers moving around at the same time, um, and that's that's happening, especially like in these C based languages like Python. That's happening like all uh, at the same time in parallel, and it's all loaded up into memory, right? So you need to have a memory that's able to. And, and by the way, the transformer itself allows it, so we can do th tons of stuff in parallel. So you can just have these crazy, like tons of uh, the multi-headed attention. Um, and that's the key query value thing that I was talking about. You get to have multiple heads operating at the same time, which itself is going to make it so that you learn more and more and more about each token. So you need to have more and more and more matrix multiplication happening at the same time. And as you keep expanding the matrix multiplication, you keep expanding the amount of memory that needs to get loaded at the same time. But the, this, the math is very simple. It's actually not as complicated as a lot of graphics math, but it requires a ton of memory. Um, so that's why we have we have these like A100s that's like, it's like the memory bus is like huge. Because um, it needs to be like uh, allocating and deallocating memory across like all at the same time across a ton of different um, reg registers. So the cool thing, about LoRa is that you just you get to use less memory. <laughs> and the cool thing about QLoRa is that it does quantization. So to 
it's to do it all the way down to I think even four bit, but like eight bit and four bit quantization, so that the floating point is way less. Um. So so the floating point precision, I mean, is way less. So it's typically going to be sixteen or thirty two bits, and now it's further, it's way down. Meaning, like you know, when you do this is floating point precision. When you do one divided by three in your coding language, and then it the, you just says zero point three 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 three, that stops. Uh, that stopping point is is like the precision, right? It's typically going to be like sixteen. Like we go in here, and we do like one divided by like how many is that? Yeah, it's it's sixteen right here. So it's it's floating point sixteen. So it's like that's how much you can store, and then this is the floating point right so that you can have like the dot the, the right and then um and when we do that you notice how once we get past 16 they rounded it up right that, that's a memory uh optimization that v8 is doing here the i'm, I'm using node right here but anyway so like that happens in, all, in every programming language and that's like whenever people talk about floating point, that's why it's like it's such a pain, like like that thing when you're doing a lot of math. But anyway, so these models are like having that because these weights, it, it turns out when you like just use like less bits, it, it actually kind of operates very similarly, even though you lose a lot of information. Um, but the general vibe is similar. Um, maybe some things missing there. I would definitely like look it up on your own, but in general that's why q lore and lore is really cool and also they don't train the, all the layers like they'll it'll just be applied to layers i think the output like a few output layers if you don't know the layers that's like the neurons so like you have uh, a different layer with a certain amount of um neurons in it um and then each of these are going to be firing and activating Thanks, that helped a lot. So basically, it's just making fine tuning more efficient. But how can I make fine tuning much better? My challenge is to make my LLM learn custom data domain context. Um, it'll so when some whenever you make something more efficient, you're making it better because you have more opportunity to to reiterate on your data. So like making your fine tuning better is more your is is going to be the more efficient the the training is it's you're going to have to be messing with your data set. So like, and then that's across like all machine learning, right? So like, I mean, all engineering, um, machine learning and a ton of things. So like, um, you, you have something great that's giving you, making it more efficient for you. So now qu quantized llama is like llama with a tiny lack of sleep. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. That's interesting. Yeah, because when you have lack of sleep, you also fire off less. You, your brain's activated far less. It's like a, it's like, um, because you know, like when you exercise, you activate like a ton of parts, uh, parts of your brain. So <laughs> that, that's actually funny because uh, it's like a, it's like a lazier version. Um, my, but yeah, so like so so really so just think like it, it, the cool thing about to make your fine thing better you need to make sure you have a good data set so you need to understand your data set a lot it needs to be clean you need to make sure you don't have one thing that's like way bigger than something else like or it needs to be pretty uniform and um it needs to be well it depends on on what it, what you're doing and and you need to make sure that you're graphing out like use matplotlib to graph out your validation um, evaluation and your um, with your validation data set. I'm saying uh, your validation loss and your training loss. Um, make sure you're graphing your loss and then you're, you're seeing the cool thing about uh, QLORA is the learning rate is a lot lower. I mean, it's a lot higher. My bad. It's it's a uh, I think the default is like two e4 something like that so like 0.002 when typically it's like 0 0.40s and five or like four so like it's like a tenth smaller learning rate but it's going to be 
optimizing the learning rate as you're using it anyway, but it starts from a, a much higher learning rate, which means that these, as you're, as it's learning, it's going to be your, that's why your data set needs to be really good because as you're learning in the beginning, it's going to be making way more, um, like, uh, it's going to have a, a way more, uh, what's the right word? Like, um, not, but I'm not trying not to say bias, but it's just, it's just going to move the, uh, it's going to learn faster. Yeah. It's going to learn faster. Um, which is cool. We understand when your thing's learning faster and your data isn't, isn't uniform. And you, by the way, you should try to have as mu as high of a batch size as you can because of this as well. So you can look at, uh, well, to a, to a certain point, so you can look at more data. And this is good because this is like really important information that um, is like, we're going to be experimenting with some of this. Is it worth paying Colab to have a better GPU in order to play with the fine tune? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I think um, seeing the, the magic of like the A100s is like super important super important um because it, it like uh well i don't mean the magic of the a100s i mean the magic of the uh being able to have access to really high quality like for the 40 gig and up gpus lets you see more of the magic of the llms and more of the potential and then you get to see uh more of what you can do with it if that makes sense but also like you know, do what you want, though, because, um, yeah, like that's that's cool. But if you have a if you have a, a nice laptop, like if you have a gaming laptop that you can just have like the quantized version locally, then, th then that's that's cool, too. Like it's not you be, being able to compare. It's cool, too. But really, you could be a little further down the pipeline uh, and just be someone that's always using the quantized versions of these. And then that's unique in itself because you get to always be experimenting in like what will actually be done. Most of the environment, most developers will be using. So there's a advantage to both. Anyway, so, so we, we sort of, sort of understand the ROP and all right. So the instruction fine tuning. So they have a proprietary data set of, so they, right. So they use the, they say specifically we use the version referred to uh, for their instruction tuning data set in the paper RLHF collected through several stages of reinforcement learning from, and by the way, I, I've been self, I self learned all this fairly recently. So like get a ton of feedback from a ton of people and distill it. That's what I do. I try to learn from people that know more than me. And I try to learn from people with various perspectives. And I try to read a lot about these concepts. And so I can get like a, a really good uh, um, kind of like combination of a lot of these things. Okay. So each example consists of multi-turn dialogue between a user and an assistant. Okay, so several stages of, it combines thousands of surprise, supervised, surprised, fine tuning and millions of rejection sampling examples. Each example consists of a multi-turn dialogue between a user and assistant for rejection sampling the output was selected among several generations using a reward model. The final data set contains both helpfulness and safety data. This enables Code Llama to inherit Llama 2's instruction following. That's cool. That's, that's interesting. So this is what I want to get to, self-instruct. So our proprietary data set contains few examples of code related tasks, collecting supervised data from human annotators or training from human feedback it is expensive for coding tasks as it requires input from professional developers. Instead of human feedback, we use execution feedback to select data to training our instruct model. We construct and self instruction data set following that. Okay. So like they, so they have this way. So the reason what separates the boys from the men here is 
the RLHF is what a lot of these really good LLM lang large language models are using is this reinforcement learning human feedback thing where they have a reinforcement model based on human annotators saying yay or nay on different things, right? So, and that's expensive. And then instead of the human uh, feedback that they're getting, they have an execution feedback based on uh, the self-instruction data, data set, which they develop using this recipe they say here, where they pretty much generate a ton of inter interview style questions for prompting using Llama, their other Llama 2 model. And then they deduplicate it. And then they, for each of the questions, they generate unit tests, they generate Python solutions, they run unit tests and solutions, yada, yada, yada. And I think they evaluate yeah, so they add the solution if it if it uh, runs on the generated if the generated unit test passes, they use that instruction. So it's a it's a useful instruction if the code actually passes. Um, that's cool. So they're really so rather than having human annotators, they're using like this generated data set that they have. Does that make sense? So okay, they train it. I'm gonna skip the the training. Trainings, I get it. They, they, they had a lot of compute to train this and, and the results were good. All right, <laughs> let's get into actually messing around here. All right, so let's go and let's reconnect. I have my A100 here. Nice. Nice, we got an A100. Okay, so, well, first, before I get straight into it, I wanna, I wanna go, there's this code llama instruct model. So actually, hold on a sec. I don't think, I don't think this is, they like uploaded this to Hugging Face, but I don't think it's ready yet. Let me just check if it's ready. If not, we can use, uh, I know the bloke, which is great. Just uploaded a new one. You're uploaded code llama, which is nice. So let's go and uh, let's, let's do it. And all right, so let's get sentence transformers. Oh wait, I don't need sentence. Well, yeah, yeah, let's do that. So we're using this like junior dev thing that I have. Let's install Accelerate. Let's install Transformers. Let's install Bits and Bytes. I don't, I don't know. We're doing that for the QLaura thing, but I don't, we don't have to do that here, I don't think. We're just doing that to load it in low in a quantized version. It's interesting. I don't know if like it's actually gonna be good. I don't know. And we we can change our prompts to to be uh used for this. So we can change the generic prompt. That's why I made this base prompt thing so that it's easy to, to switch out. Oh, but I just realized we gotta change um all the parts where we do this. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's actually not change that. Anyway, <clears throat> let's try to load this up. Let's not use wizard coder for now. Let's use this and let's load this up. Nope. Oh, wait. Why do I not have torch? What is going on? Okay. Yeah. Why would I not have Torch it imported? It's really weird. It must be imported below. Yeah, it's imported in this one. It's fine. Let's just import it right here. It's imported in both. 
I'm I'm curious how good this is. Why is it? oh yeah, and that's also not imported. This is imported down here. What's I doing? Was I high? All right, so it's downloading. Is this actually downloading? Nice. I tried this before and it was like messed up. Hmm. Because it, it didn't have a model bin. So when you download stuff from Hugging Face, it needs to be named in a way that Hugging Face can, if you want to use these auto model things. It needs to be, the file needs to be named in a way that they can automatically get it. Let's see though. I, we'll have to see once this this first chunk loads up. Looks like there's three three shards. Oh, okay. All right, it's installing. I think they're, I don't know if this is the official one or or what. Is this the official one? I have no idea. They said, please make sure to get, oh, whoops. So they actually say get and transformers. Hmm. That's a goal. Oh. I feel like it's going to load the whole thing and it's going to break. I actually don't know the instruction. Oh, I know the instruction thing. So the this actually changes. This changes to this. The base, is this loading? Yeah, it's loading. So the this base model changes to, let's actually make this a little smart real quick. Base prompt. I think all we need I don't think we need to tell it anything. I think we can just say this. And then, then we'll just, I think that's how you make instructions for this. Maybe wrong. Oh yeah, I know they have tokens for like Python or whatever, for the Python one, but let's just not do that. I think it's smart enough not to, to use that here. So, so, yeah, they want us to install the new transformers, but I think it's fine. This might be old. Anyway, so let's optimize our code to use this new LLM. We're not going to do this anymore. But let's actually say output response token equals, and then we'll just dynamically do this this kind of went that out we'll, we'll make a response token that's like the end of the instruction yeah okay and then we'll just use self response token here and this is, this is going to get used in a ton of places this is how i get parse the output is i just check in the output whether the the response token is there we're just making this dynamic so we can use different lms for it because this is the wizard coder setup we're using our our setup here okay cool let's see it's actually just in case someone wants to use this so this is for wizard coder We're going to understand that. I feel like. I feel like you've got to be super clear because people just don't understand things. Um, all right. So let's get this. Let's run this. Oh, wait, we ran that too early. OK, let's let's test it out. It's loaded. So let's test it out. We're going to load up wizard coder. I mean, code llama. 
and we're bleeding we're being bleeding edge here oh yeah i want to get clone I'm, I'm cloning a repo that i made for this one thing yeah let's clone that repo and let's just ls to make sure it's there so just so we can read this code base because i have a little thing like a little vector db loaded here let's reload this this is our, our main class so what this does is I have a function to write tests, a function to bootstrap projects, and a function to fix bugs. And I have a function to size tickets and give technical feedback. Let's um let's test it. Let's let's test it writing tests. So I have this like link generator form thing. And this is in the code base I have. And it was actually, the other thing was really good at writing tests, wizard LM. Let's see if this is good at writing tests. So the prompt is I just say, hey, write a test for this file. And I just paste, put the file and read it here. And this is the file. It's just, it's like a React code to like generate a form. And it uses an API to get a link. Um, I mean, to generate a link. It's a form that generates a link for this application so that people can use this share link. And um, we're going to see if it can write a test for it. All right. So let's see. Let's test this out. Is it running? Yeah, we're running. Oh, it's loading te uh, sentence transformers, which we just use for vectorizing. Let's see. We're testing colon. Let's see. It's writing the test. It's using our junior developer to write the test. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Oh. Is broke. Said, oh, yeah, our response token thing messed up. Because it didn't get the response. All right, let's print out the full response before we do this, this funny stuff. Let's actually check if. Test codes if like test codes greater than zero return. We're just seeing because I tell it to give output like this. No. But I don't think it did. Let's just return output else. We don't have to print. Turn the whole output if, if it breaks. All right, so is that is that good? I think we're good here. Yeah, we're just seeing if we can parse this output from. This. So this is checking if there's there's markdown in the output. Do I say that here? I think do I? I just want to make sure. Test prompt. Uh, markdown format respond with the written unit test write unit tests i just want to be very clear this is a unit test right a unit test four is below the code right unit test four is below In markdown format, do not respond with any explanation. In markdown format. Hmm. Yeah, Maybe we want to just copy this. So each file must strictly follow.
with a code you must you must use markdown just reiterate it all right let's see let's get this again okay let's try again Wait, do I need to do something else? Hold on, I need to do something else. I need to rerun this, rerun this one, rerun this one. Okay, let's run it again. Let's try it again. This is, this is not using a lot of GPU, wow. Oh, because I'm doing, I'm loading it up in um, with bits and bytes in the quantized version. Nice. It's doing something. It's writing a test. Let's see if it breaks this time. We said if it can't find the test in Markdown, just render the whole thing that it just returns which kind of sucks but whatever it may have just not did it in markdown i don't know wizard coder did this really well so let's see how this how this does it and maybe we have to fix the the prompt maybe if this is bad then it's like what <laughs> I feel like it's doing a lot. Hmm. I feel like it's doing a lot here. <laughs> hmm. This test should not be that long, but whatever. Let's go. Let's get a test here. Come on. Do, 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 do. One thing about like using this stuff is if it takes as long as you it takes to code it, then there's no point. Right? <laughs> nah, I wouldn't take this long. It, it would take like a while to write a unit test, you know, it would take like an hour or something. Or like, you know, I mean, depends on what, what the function is. But this is a this is a lot. It also might have not stopped. Like, I don't know if it understands. Oh, wait. setting pet token to oh it didn't i don't think it's ending the, the string properly the tokens properly it says it's the end of string token id set to this do they do they tell us to do something specific this might be generating a ton of code let's see they don't have like any like directions here yet which is fine we're big boys we don't need directions let's see i may just use the bloke version Yeah, unless I can figure out the EOS, but it's just, yeah, I may just use this one. This one, is this legit?
to convert the weights to HF. I may use this version instead. I mean, set the max tokens to like something short. Obviously, it shouldn't be taking that long. Okay, it's that. Let's run it again. Prompt. Okay, let's, let's run this again. They, do they say what this uh, token ID is? Oh, it's the wrong page. I want to know what the EOS token is. Maybe it's in the, it's in the, it's in here. So let's. Let's do this. Let's look at the example instructions. This is the self-training prompts. So it was trained on prompts like this. That's, that's just something that we're just going to have to wait for. Why is this taking so long? <laughs> 12 for open-ended. Okay. Yo, my BM late was working on a project we learning today. Yeah, we're, it's a lot of, yeah, I, I ran through the code llama paper and now we're testing it out, but I don't think we have the end of string token. So it's just taking a long time to generate. Let's actually undo this. We're just, we're trying to write a test right now. Let's see. Let's do like 200 tokens. Top K of 10. And then. Yeah, we had a lot of value. You missed so much valuable knowledge. We learned a lot. Today's a big learn day. Big learn day. Oh, wait. I think I, I'm overriding the max new tokens. <laughs> Hold on a sec. Let me, let me stop this. I'm overriding it to be 4,000 right here. Where is it? Oh no, I'm not. Never mind. All right, let's test it again. We may have to load up another model to actually test here. No, here for it. Yeah, no, yeah, we the uh yeah, you may have to rewatch because yeah, we talked through a lot of stuff. But I mean, in general, really all it is is Code Llama, it has um, three models. There's an instruction one, fine-tune instruction one. 
which is fine tuned on self instructs. So it used itself to generate instructions rather than a ton of humans. And then, um, and then there's the Python fine tune model, and then they have the generic one. The main thing is that they have this infilling thing, uh, where they train the model off of casual masking. And then they have, uh, then they have this long context window thing, which they do this rotary positioning thing um, rather than the absolute positioning. Oh, it's the final test. It didn't even do it. Hold on a second. Why didn't it do it? What? Am I doing this wrong? That was terrible. <laughs> Wait, let's look at the prompt. Let's look at the prompt. And also, even if we didn't pass in the instruction, it should be pretty good at writing tests. Maybe this is, like, I don't even know. This is like a shady repo right here. Hmm. You are a full stack. So we say you're a full stack web developer and your code is to write unit test, yada, yada. You must use this framework and you must use the code right here. Why was that so bad? <laughs> what? Let's just be super simple here. Maybe we're just doing too much here. Let's be super, super, super simple here. And let's use the um, coder LLM class to just pass in an instruction. So I think we already have the coder LM somewhere. Yeah, it's right here. Let's just, let's not, let's just do something from scratch here. Generate, and then let's just do instruction. Write a Python, write a function, JavaScript, that scrapes, Twitter for tweets. Is that too complicated? That might be, be too much. I mean, we may have to do like a, a JavaScript thing. Like, I don't really know how to run an inference on it. I'm pretty sure it should be pretty good at, at, at that. An output. Oh yeah, we got a printing up over here. I don't know why. I don't know why that was so bad. In the end, even if this is bad, we learned about it. We learned how to use it. We may have to switch to um to this one because I don't, I don't know if, if they if this one's messed up or I don't, I don't know what's going on there. Okay, let's print the output. Nice. Okay, it's writing a function here. But we stopped it early, I think. Yeah, we stopped it early. Nice. So that actually like outputted a thing. Nice. So like I don't know. They set the pad token to they just do open ended pass your inputs to attention max to Oh wait, no, 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 no. It's it is it does have the EOS token. Never mind. I read that wrong. Anyway, let's let's increase the con so it, it looks like it did start generating that. Let's increase the I don't know what's wrong with my like why can't it take this instruction here? This instruction's pretty basic. Like I just say where is it? Like you are a full you must use this framework. Maybe I should do that. Only respond with the written UTIN and 
markdown code block format. You must use markdown. Maybe that confused it. In our spawn with any exploit, uh, you implemented it, the code you must write for the unit test. Unit test four is below. Hmm. It, like it, it should have did this, right? I don't know. All right, let's go back to the generate. And where's the generate? Let's increase this default to 1024. All right, let's rerun this. Let's try to get a zero. What happens when I print this whole thing? I just realized it didn't even like do this right. Oh well, oh yeah, because it did there's no stop token, so it just does this. I like so it hits this query AP, it hits the api it's it it literally doesn't scrape it <laughs> like it says data dot tweets it's not a thing <laughs> that's, that's not how you you scrape tweets this is horrible <laughs> okay so we may be doing something wrong though right like we may be doing something wrong. It's entirely possible. To be fair, actually, this is a hard thing to do. Let's 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 uh let's not do that because it needs to like know the the DOM and all that. To sort an array based on object p has the only the arguments to the function must be the uh the array of objects and the object key to sort by that's a pretty generic thing i'm just telling it to give me a function that sorts in JavaScript that sorts an array of objects based on an object key. That's pretty simple. So it's only built to generate Pi code? No, no, it's on like a ton of, like it did just generate JavaScript. It was just like not good. And I may be using the wrong model here. I may be using like a BS model. I'm gonna use this instead because I don't know like if this one's legit or because uh whoops so we'll see we'll see do 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 all right well, while that's running well not much to i mean this is this the whole thing is testing this oh okay it actually finished it i'm being a baby all right okay so it just logged a ton of spaces i'm pretty sure cool so it just hallucinated and just logged a ton of spaces awesome it named the function right I, <laughs> it also like did this in, it's INST, right? Yeah, INST. Did I? And then, and the instruction. Here's a sample. Are we doing this right? I don't know. I don't know why that sucks. Okay. Let's use, let's restart the, the session and like it, it, it named the function, right? It may, this also may be us. This may be us. It's entirely possible. So I'm going to load up a different model 
Because I know I trust the bloke. Because I don't know if we loaded the right one. I trust the bloke on the hugging face. So let's use theirs. Let's see. Let's see if theirs is. Because it, it might be that we just loaded a weird model. Because I don't know if code. Because I'm pretty sure it's not code llama. I'm pretty sure it's um. It would be meta slash. Yeah, the other one's meta. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe this is like a fake model. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. All right, let, let's load this up. I had to restart it because I know that the GPU would be too big. And I already, by the way, I already like tried this one out for the React engineer, and it was okay. So like, we're we're in a pretty sure this one's fine. Pretty sure this one's fine. But I thought this one wasn't. I, like, I know this one is a. Uh, it's um they do some transformation to it i don't think it's the original one i gotta look more into that all right we're loading the model hey jerry just want to say i love your channel great content thanks daniel pyro a very cool last name thanks yeah i'm um i'm just making i'm gonna make so much content this year it's just the beginning. I have so many ideas. It's crazy. I want to heaven ban people next. Because it's going to happen. I want to show people how it's done. Like how. <laughs> it's going to be a funny one. I think maybe tomorrow. Ah, maybe not. Maybe Monday. I want to heaven ban. I need to think through. I was going to do it tonight. But then we're doing a more chill one. Because uh, I just don't want to. I don't want to like go to do a too crazy of an idea without too much prep i don't want to waste any, anyone's time so we're just we're experimenting today experimenting code llama <clears throat> all right let's allow this okay so we loaded up code llama let's load up our thing we don't really need to do any of this because we're just testing well, actually, let's retry. Let's retry the the unit test writer. Yeah. Let's retry the unit test writer. Yo, Jared, do you know how to program? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> DJ Pressure, really, really weird question there. How'd you get here? <laughs> DJ Pressure, how did you get here? I mean, that's the whole thing. Yeah. So that's why there's people here. Yeah. I'm, I'm not the best. I'll get there, though. I'll reach Hacker Valhalla one day. One day. Got to be the best. Got to be the best at what you do in life. Reach higher mountains, get stronger. All right, so this is still running. Let's see. Curious to hear your thoughts about fine tuning code llama on a specific code base, for example. What do you mean? Um. Well, first we got to see if this actually works well, because um. <laughs> Based on the results so far, Daniel, you may want to use Wizard Coder, which was great when we tried Wizard Coder out. Um, but anyway, so if you want to, so in, in general, when you're fine tuning, it's like, what do you want to do? So it's like, if you're fine tuning on a code base, what's the point? 
Is it you want it to learn about the code base? Because if you're fine tuning something, you want it to generate something in a in a certain structure. You want it to learn a new structure on how to generate, right? So you're giving it tokens that are ordered in a certain sequence in a data set. And that sequence is going to be used on inference. <clears throat> so think about what you want to do when you're fine tuning. Does that make sense? So like, for instance, like if you want to find like what there's an example of like fine tuning on a code base. So you could say, use the style of this code base have it to learn how the developers who built this code base learn how to code. You could do that or how they structure their code. You could do that. Maybe that's a good thing to do. Maybe that's a good thing to do. I mean, you may want to vectorize a code base using some sort of embeddings and then some sort of embedding, uh, model and then you could store that and then you could do stuff with it well let's say i'm using reg for answering questions about my code base if my model is fine tuned a lot of examples specific to pipe like yes style so it's really not so much so it sounds like you don't really want to fine tune it on your code base you want to fine tune it to be really good at coding pytorch when it comes to apis and, in, and having like PyTorch being an API, having a language model know how to use APIs, look into Gorilla, the Gorilla, Gorilla API. Wow, this is taking a long time, by the way, to, to run this. But look up the Gorilla API. So that that's really useful. Because um, what they do is they, they have, have a understanding of a lot of different APIs. So they, they'll, they have a model specifically, you know, I'm asking because what's the difference between coding versus computer programming? Um, <clears throat> so like, there's not really a difference. People just say coding because it's codes, right? So like when I have, oh my God, it didn't do it at all. That's, well, oh, so I'll get back to, to, to your question in a sec. Let's test out this, but anyway, so yeah, let's test out this, right. So we're writing, we're testing out this sort function right here. Wow. This is like not doing it well. I might, I might be doing the inference wrong. <laughs> um, we'll see. But anyway, so like coding is just like kind of a way people talk about computer programming. So like, Computer programming is a phrase that's around like kind of telling the computer what to do. And the way you tell the computer what to do is you write uh, code. You write computer code that gets translated into machine code that the computer can understand. And then we have so many abstractions of computer code that we now write and really like, let's look at this function right here. Like I'm saying for every file name, I'll give you something sim simpler. It's like, if this variable ignore folder or ignore folder or not is a file, like this is very easy. Idiomatic is the way it's called. It's very easy for me to understand the way I read this. So like, that's an abstraction. And <clears throat> this is very easy for me to write codes for the computer and understand. And then these codes are uh, compiled into another into machine code. That's what compilations doing is you're putting the higher level uh, programming language and you're compiling it to the stream is so 10 X. What's up, Coda? Welcome back, Coda. Welcome back. So like you're compiling it to uh, yeah, no, yeah, this, this one, the this model is not doing well at all. But like, yeah, so everything gets compiled to machine code. That's why code is used. Coding and computer programming are the same thing when people use these terms. 
Yeah. So it's is there any any confusion there? Anyway, Daniel, you look up Gorilla. Look up Gorilla. Gorilla is um really really cool. Because it's not that you want to fine tune a um your code base on your code, right? It, you want to fine fine tune it so that it understands PyTorch. Does that make sense? For Cody, you missed the best part. We like learned how Code Llama works. Got it. Cool. I like to explain. Any anyone else have questions about stuff? I've been teaching code for years. Literally, like since I was a like a little kid. I had a, I had a high school coding club. Like saw our, like software engineering whatever and i remember i would just teach kids that a code after school i'm doing this a long time <laughs> that's 10 years ago i've been in the game <laughs> all right but now but eventually you get to a point where wow this is taking so <laughs> Why is this taking so long? Max new tokens. This is so like bad. Anyway, let's see what this actually did. So it, it generated a ton of white space. Okay, so let's just not experiment with code llama anymore. Because this is actually super bad. It didn't even like do it. it. I think I think it just generated white space. Wow. <laughs> this experiment sucked. So Gorilla is pretty cool. It could be used as a tool for larger model to be used for specific tasks. Yeah. So yeah, let's just like talk. Cause yeah, this experiment. <laughs> well, let's just. Uh... Let's just not even experiment with code llama. This sucks. <laughs> we did. It's okay. It's okay. Meta, good job. Good job. I uh there's also maybe something wrong in how I'm generating it, but I don't know. I doubt it. I doubt it. Um so Gorilla is pretty cool. It could be used as a tool for larger. Yeah, so Gorilla's cool. The cool thing about Gorilla is, um, so the, look up tool former as well. It's kind of like building off of this concept in tool former, which is really neat where they're able to train the LLM to pretty much encode it with information on when to use an API. So these AI agents are kind of built off of this concept, like auto GPT and everything to say like, okay, actually detect when to use something so I can read the output the LLM has and say, hey, I don't know. Like if for instance, like it asked the birthday of Brad Pitt or whatever, and it's like, hey, maybe it doesn't know that, but it can detect based on the question to use an API to find that out. So like maybe the API is something that scrapes Google with the question, right? So take that for instance, and then now use that for like thousands of little APIs like PyTorch. We're not talking about APIs as in HTTP API. We're saying like APIs in a library. So take PyTorch, Transformers, but all these different libraries, um, accelerate all these things, and then actually figure out which task you want to do within the API. Um, and then, it, so it generates really good code bases that understand underlying um, functions and methods that you really want to use that are actually usable. Um, that's really important for like getting these code alums to actually work. I don't know why this one's messed up, but um let's just go back to wizard coder i don't know what's going on here but uh wizard code is is doing great <laughs> um we learned about it in the first half we learned about it in the first half 
hopefully someone in the comments can just tell me like, hey, you're doing that wrong. Actually, the, the beginning of this is really cool because we actually learn a ton of cool stuff. But uh, anyway, so let's go and let's go back. Let's load up wizard coder. All right, let's try this out in wizard coder. Wait, we want to re, re comment out this and then re comment out this. Does that make sense though? Pro tips start over. Um, <laughs> maybe the. 34 billion models better. No, I, no, it's, this is so bad that I, I'm pretty sure. I, I wonder if you could try it hosted version and see if you get good answers. Oh, yeah. Let's see if we get. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I think I think I think the problem really is really is this. Oh. <laughs> ah, let me stay in the line. Okay. All right. This. Is he going to be able to load this? This is a 13 billion parameter. Let's see, perplex. I wonder if you could try perplex. Yeah, perplexity. Yeah, maybe I should start over, Coda. Uh. Start it all over. <laughs> let's go, let's go. What math is used in coding? Um, it depends on what you're trying to do. Depends on what you're trying to do. DJ pressure. <laughs> why, DJ, why DJ pressure? That's a little... It's a little like intense. You're know, working your branding, DJ pressure. It's like I feel pressured. You're asking all these questions. You're like, you're like, what is what is the math? I'll say for linear algebra a lot. Yeah, a lot of linear algebra, actually. Like for real. Um for machine learning, it's a ton of linear algebra um, and calculus for machine learning. But for general coding, like, depends on what you're trying to do. Game programming, is, you're going to have a combination of a lot of, like, ge geometry and uh, physics and, uh, and linear algebra as well. Linear algebra is used for a lot of, like, problem solving in distance. Um, algorithms and um, a lot of logs <clears throat> in general. I mean, the whole entire. I know I come up with the name when I was thirteen. I'm just yeah, I'm just playing with it. But um, the uh, you, when you were thirteen, you had big plans. Uh, you were like DJ Pressure is gonna be gonna be. That's the thing that that's my, that's like, I've done that same thing when I was, um, 11 or whatever. I was like, I named myself J wordy. That's still my GitHub to this day. It's J A W E R T Y. What was that? I was talking about the math used in. Oh yeah. So the actual, like tr at the transistor level, um, 
learning about the bases is important. I guess that is a map concept, but uh, at the machine level, learning about bits and, um, you know, learning about information theory helps a lot. Your middle name must be Andrew. Um, are you doing, could, are, are you doing a, uh, what's it called? Like a, 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 tor- a, a tarot reading right now? You know, your middle name must be Andrew. It's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know where that came from. Yeah, I don't even know that. What do you, what do you mean by that? Let's see. Yeah, this is st- still loading the model here. All right. <laughs> who even who even cares about Code Llama, right? I need. You know what I need to do? I need to like actually. Does anyone know like a good way to use a hosted version of this? Well, let's try this one too the same thing code llama it's too large yeah this one's too large we could have just loaded up an inference endpoint yeah maybe that's better to load up an inference endpoints yeah but we just talk about stream ideas next stream i'm gonna have and ban people on twitter So I'm going to generate bots that just regurgitate what the people want to hear. What, like you enter in a user and it'll just like, like bots will just reply to that user with stuff that's like agreeing with what they, they want to say. And be like, wow, like, but it's like using a transform like GPT or something. So it's like really like, like believable. (laughs) We were like, wow, I'm like really right. I think George Hodds is the one that, that first said heaven banning. We'll figure I mean, Code Llama isn't even like, it's released, but um, I need to just load it up with the Llama CPP rather than using, because I don't think it's on Hugging Face yet. Like, I mean, it is. I've, review Summarizer is something I want to do for a while. Something that just summarizes a review. We can do that right now with uh, Llama 2. We can load up Llama 2 and then just say, like, hey, can you, um, like, load up a, um, I, th- I think I just realized what's wrong with, anyway, but, uh, so you can just, like, load up Llama 2, or, I mean, any any LLM. You could just ask ChatGPT. You could just, like, you know, like, summarize all the MRIs. Oh, all of the reviews. So it can, like, scrape all the reviews and then it gets um, the the sentiment, and maybe it just uses one of these LLMs with a huge context. You know, it'd be interesting. You know how you really could summarize it? Let's think about this. You generate embeddings for all the sentences, for all the reviews, you cluster them, and then you find the largest grouping, and then you use that largest grouping, like the top, what like the whatever's in the in the uh centroid like three four things in that in the centroid for that the closest ones to that and then you use those as context to pass to an llm to say summarize these three reviews that's how you want to do it so i would say first um use sentence transformers to embed a ton of amazon will scrape all the reviews Use sentence transformers to embed all of them, cluster them with k-means, and then find the k-means is really cool too. Um, you should just know how to use k the k k-means algorithm anyway. Um, it's not clustering the sentiments; it's clustering the embeddings, and then this is a way to find sentiment because you find whichever is the largest uh, cluster. You get the centroid. You get like the four closest embeddings to that or like five or whatever and then now you have what is like sort of the most sentiment that's based on it and then um and then use that to say hey uh summarize these five reviews chat gpt or whatever or whatever lm you could tie it in the llama too or you could just use a basic summarizer algorithm 
Well, it's not it's not similarity search. You, you want to do clustering. Um, you don't need to do a, a similarity search. Well, you can, you can. So it may be pointless, but a website we got to get Coda's in. Coda's a he's a he's a main in the chat. So it it may be pointless, but a website that you can paste a YouTube link and edit the audio live in the browser without updating a file. That's really cool. It's not pointless. I mean, that's really useful. I would use that. But let's see, all you, like all you people say this product suck. Like tell you people, oh yeah. Random question, do you think people, but random question, do you think people are gonna be replaced with AI one day? Just curious. I have a video where I try to break down I try to, which is where I got that junior dev code, which actually was like working with wizard coder. Oh wait, right. We're using wizard coder. But, um, so like, so it can, are people going to be replaced by AI? It's like, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, like possibly. I don't know. The thing is, um, yeah, let's run this. The thing is, is oh, what's a what broker? Substring not found. Self that response. Oh wait, hold on a sec. Let's do this. And let's then do this. And then let's do this. Oh no, let's do this. Hold on a sec. Let, let me just rerun this. And then okay. But uh the thing is it's like this is a bad example of code code LLMs are actually pretty good. I think I'm just using this wrong. Um for instance, wizard code is really good. Um you can look at the video where I try to figure out whether we can like code some features uh that a junior dev would do and it actually works pretty well um but like uh, per personally it's not a matter of is it going to replace people um as much as like ai is not going to replace people people make ai so people you can't like replace yourself really but you but are certain jobs going to be automated yeah like uh, i think pretty clearly uh, like whether that's going to be crazy damning like maybe i mean like damning to your career like it depends on what you do i think you should operate at a higher level of abstraction before other people in the, in the way you think no matter what you do so you should be thinking that's why systems thinking is really important it's like when you're at a job don't just be someone that's like you just think about the the thing you're it's a it's a way it's linear thinking versus associative thinking it's like linear thinking is important because it's how you like just keep going down the direct path of what you're doing well associative thinking you're looking you're finding patterns within a ton of different uh linear functions so like i would say get if you're someone that's good at associative thing and looking at systems and getting the patterns you're going to be able to adjust to industry changes easier because when like the tides shift you're going to be like oh like well like for instance like uh and instead of just like waiting for gpt to, to take your your coding job like figure out tools to build um to pipelines to generate code, right? Or, or maybe maybe uh, you can think ahead and think, okay, it's like, sure, it's cool to do this co big context window code generation thing, but at the end of the day, people are gonna wanna have a way to maybe not generate functions, but generate components and the the system itself. So maybe, maybe instead of an llm to generate actual functions it generates like system graphs or something or it generates architectures for software 
and then it just fills in the the code bases because that's more of a thing that's that's easier to do or fills in the functions. Nice. Okay, so Wizard Coder actually generated a cool test here. So I, something's something's up with that we're generating. I'm doing something wrong. Wizard Coder is cool. Oh, trusty Wizard Coder. This is like a really good. Yeah, this is a good unit test. This is a really, this is really, we asked it to generate a unit test for the function, for the component we have, and it just did it. Nice. Yeah, it's written well. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's actually, I want to do this write a function thing. You got to think ahead. You got to think, ahead. that's really a long-winded way of saying you got to think ahead. Like, what are you doing? Why aren't you thinking ahead? Let's see. Let's use this. Coder LLM dot base prompt. Then is base prompt a thing? Hold on. Let's see if we can write this function right here. Base prompt a thing. It is a thing. It's right here. Cool. Does that make sense? All right. So, great advice. Use the AI to do the heavy lifting for you. Become, yeah, exactly, Daniel. Yeah, exactly. That, that's what I'm saying. It's like, keep building systems and keep thinking in systems. And then you'll think of the systems of the systems and the systems. You know what I mean? It's like, Think about how efficient you can be in an hour and then utilize AI to be more efficient in that hour. Like just make it, make it your per, per hour productivity. Keep optimizing that. I mean, that's what people that are good at coding do anyway with the various tools or just learning more about something. It's all just to make it so you can do more in a shorter amount of time and, and be more productive, not just write, crappy code in a short amount of time. And um, that's why I say when you're learning how to code, you should be, in my opinion, you, you should get used to building a lot of features as you're coding. Like work with a, t a lot of this like system at the same time, which I, I know that, that maybe not everyone likes that, but I think that's a really good way to get good at, at coding. Let's see here. Cool. I mean, it did it. It's a super simple function, <laughs> but wizard coder wrote it. Okay. Sort object by keys. That's exactly what we want. We just want a function that sorts objects by keys. That's it. That's it. And it does it. It's a super simple function. And then it says a, a ton of stuff, but the, so you want to get good at context switching a lot. Um, especially in your learning phase. Let's see. So let, let's test wizard code with more stuff. I think our, the generation just messed up. Let's test wizard coder. So like, let's, let's ask wizard coder to write us a system. So write out a, an architecture for a website where you post YouTube links and get where you can edit the audio files for YouTube links the system architecture the architecture design for a website where you can edit files for YouTube links. The editor must be usable in the browser and you must be able to download final edited audio. Let's see. See if we can actually do this. 
Because we're not now we're asking it to give us like uh, instruction or to give us like a system design. I see AI as like as something where you give it a the generative AI is something where you give it a role, and then you can see where it can fulfill that role to supplement your work. Look into Meta GPT. Meta GPT is really cool because it has this concept of like roles and like utilizing these roles to to uh to sort of like have a feedback loop where like this ai is assuming this this prompt is assuming this role this is assuming this role keep feeding back information to each other all right your your message was retracted what's context switching so i don't know why art's uh let me go to the live chat. Yeah, I don't know why your message went away. Anyway, so what's context switching? Um, so it's like switching. Um, it's going from. Hold on. So it's going from one thing, like let's say you're working on the database, and then you're working on the front end design, and then you're working on, you know, it's like you're working on a lot of different contexts. And I think it's good to work on features because you know, features require a lot of context typically to implement. And it's good to, in your to-do list, just keep checking out features because you get used to going on, working on the database, working on the middle where working on the API, working on business logic, working on the front end, doing all this stuff. And when you're working on your own projects, it's really good to get used to context switching because it's all on you. And um, it's really hard to, to because you'll get if you're not used to that you'll get drained very easily spending a whole day on one thing and then a whole day on another thing and a whole day doing this uh because contact if you, the worse you are context switching the the more you're going to get drained when you're when you work okay so so we we gave it we use code as idea here so the user enters a youtube link and uploads the audio file or upload the auto file, YouTube API. So they're, they're suggesting we use the UPU API to extract the audio from the link. I don't know if that's the best way to do it. The audio is displayed on the screen along with a timeline that can be used to edit the audio. User can adjust the pitch, speed, and volume. Is this sort of your idea, Coda? User can add filters to the audio, such as echo, reverb, and delay when the user is delayed. I'm like delay <laughs> when the user is satisfied with the edited audio they can download it the edited audio is saved on the server and can be used in the future i mean that checks out so the architecture design they're suggesting we use html css javascript for the front end interface they want us to use ajax and jquery it's kind of old technology uh for the communicating the, and then the server yeah i mean this is all it kind of checks out they just want us to use uh, Python and Flask as the front end API. Um, they want us to use Flask RESTful to deal with the CRUD, interesting, to deal with the CRUD operations so creating and reading and deleting stuff. MySQL for storing the audio files and metadata. And then they kind of reiterate user, yeah, they kind of reiterate everything, but with more. That's cool. Okay, so basically being good in every field. Not really. I, I don't mean just being good at everything. I mean, being able to, to, in your mind, like, not be able to work on a lot of things at the same time. It's not about being good at, at everything. It's about being able to work on a lot of different things simultaneously and keep a lot of different concepts in your head. So you see how this like gave us a plan. It's like, that's, so that's a cool way AI can sort of supplement your work. It's like, we'll build the plan. And maybe we say we analyze this output automatically. And we say, based on this output, LLM, generate a code base or generate like first generate this part of the code base, then generate this part. of the, You know what I mean? So it's like, we'll have the one that has the role to develop the plan. And then we can have one that's a role to develop the app. And maybe because LLMs aren't perfect at writing code, we just let it scaffold the app a little bit. And then we fix it up and write it ourselves as engineers. Or we, or we just say, hey, give us like a, 
a design for it. Give us like a, a style library for it. So that's that, that that's a, a way I, I kind of liked it using this stuff. DJ Pressure, do you kind of understand what I mean by context switching? Like imagine as DJ Pressure, like instead of just edit, editing uh, your 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 mixes, <laughs> you uh, like as you're editing the mix, you you maybe you're also writing lyrics and you're also doing whatever else DJs do. You know what I mean? Like you're also editing the file and creating the new beats and you do all of it, you package the whole thing at the same time rather than maybe today you write the lyrics and today. And I'm not saying that's the optimal way. I'm saying that's in, we apply that to coding and it's really good to do that when you're, you're learning how to code because you get to learn how to be more productive over time. And then when it's, when you're given a role at a job and someone's like, Hey, you just, you're just in charge of writing SQL queries. You're like, oh, cool. <laughs> like you're at, because now you're so used to like context was that you're like, oh, stay in one context is actually super nice. And then you actually like your teammates because you're like, hey, you guys like uh like I'm I'm used to this being harder. <laughs> All right, so yeah. Any other like questions about about things? I think uh we talked a lot about LLMs today. I think it was a big LLM. They, we didn't so much experiment with Code Llama because it didn't work, but we learned a lot about Code Llama today. We did experiment with it, but probably need to just download the weights and use Llama CPP. I should just do that. <laughs> I'll do it offline. Any fun stuff you do with a hundred VPS credit as a as a beginner? Wait, wait, 100 VPS? What do you mean VPS? VPS credit? Hold on a sec. What, what are you talking about? Are you talking about? Oh, are you just talking about? Oh, just like server? Like a cloud server? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. I see what you're saying. Um, interesting. <clears throat> you, just, you just mean like having a server okay like a linux box okay so one is having a linux box is super important for a beginner i spent so much time on linux boxes and setting up my own servers um and it helped me a lot and i think a lot of people should do that and you should uh, learn how to, you could do this on your own computer, but like learn how to set up Nginx or Apache, both learn how to set up um, background processes, cron jobs, learn how to learn about, well, yeah, daemonizing, learn about, um, oh, learn about firewalls, uh, how to set up a firewall, learn about get let's encrypt, learn about how to set up an HTTPS server um learn about your dev or your your front end server oh learn how to have multiple services um this is all just things you should learn how to do all those things the multiple services a uh, docker learn how to use docker all those things you'll you'll learn if you just pick a project because all those things are required for every single like server Pretty, or that's doing something like functional for a user. So I'd say pick a project you like, like that YouTube idea, could have, that's a good idea. Like pick something like that. Pick a product pr project that requires a back end and a front end and figure out how to do all that on one box. Obviously, I think if this is some cloud provider, then yeah, $100 is going to be more than enough. Um, for going to watch... If I'm going, I'm going to watch more of your older videos so I can get a better understanding of this. Um, I'm trying to think, what's a good video to DJ Pressure? What's your goal? Like your, what are your goals? What do you, what are your goals to do? Because I have a ton of videos. I started like six, seven weeks ago, and I, I've been making a ton of videos. So like, um, like most days. So. 
it, it really depends. I'm trying to cover a lot of topics, so it depends on what you're trying to do. Like, do you just want to learn how to code or do you have like a greater idea that you want to make come real? So maybe you don't need to learn to code. Maybe you need to learn how to like run a coding or a business that requires code. I don't know. Or maybe you just want to be like a coder and, and learn how to be really good at building stuff. I have a few videos on that. I have like a coding how to get good video. I feel like I'm, I made that a little more so for people that are like already know how to code. Um, that are, are maybe like a year in, but also the, I think that'd be valuable. More like the educational videos, I think would help. The, the go to, oh, the Node.js primer would help you a lot, I think. Yeah, check out the Node.js primer. I think that would help you out a lot. I, I run through a lot of stuff in that video. A lot of stuff. For just specifically for Node, which I think is a fine starting point. But yeah, all right, the, the Linux. If you have a Linux box, and I'm assuming 100 credits is similar to like if you had AWS credits. Um, that's, yeah, you can do a ton. Oh, wait, let's stop this. I don't want to... It's going to use a ton of my credits here. Credits. All right. So what would you say is most important for non-technical manager? So you're managing technical. So like you're saying you're, if you're in a position to manage engineers, because in my day to day, I'll probably be overseeing projects. I just need to know what's happening. Uh, if that's your plan to be like a project product manager, my best advice is learn how to talk to engineers, <clears throat> learn the lingo and don't get abused by them. <laughs> so understand that most coders are lying <laughs> about how long it took for them to do things and their timelines. And don't be like a jerk. Don't be like, be very like socially, you know, like aware and influential and all that. Like, don't be like, I know you're lying or whatever, but um, why are you giving up trade secrets? Cause who cares? <laughs> oh, oh, technical chops. Oh, um, depends on what field you're in. You want good technical chops? Don't worry. And you're just, you know, 80% of it. I don't know what 80% of what. That's that's really generic. But I don't know. Oh, you don't know software engineering? Learn, uh, pick up a book about Unix and C. Or Unix and um, pick up a Unix book and pick up a C, C++ book. And just, re and just read those books. Yeah. Yeah, pick up just like a Unix or Linux book and learn a ton about it and pick up a book about some programming language. Maybe not at the high level like Python. Maybe just pick something where you're going to be dealing with a ton of CS fundamentals. You could just read a book about CS, like an intro to comp sci book. That's probably the best way. I want to learn how to code so I can understand programming better. So like if you want to um, if you want to learn to code, you got to code. Like now, <laughs> like pick up, like literally go on YouTube, pick a like Python, pick Python. And just. I've done the Harvard intro CS 50 course. You've done the course, but have, have you uh, have you dug into it? Because a lot of the, you'd be surprised how much of the lingo. Oh, I don't know how deep. The thing is, for software engineering lingo, it's going to be hard to learn that on your own without starting with fundamentals. Like you could just learn the lingo on the job mostly. 
Um, Cause it's like, people are going to be talking about a ton of stuff of like, Oh, I got to make a PR or whatever. And it's like a lot of that. You can just learn like on the job, especially if you're a project manager. Oh, you've been on HN for 10 years. Well, then why do you need to know? I think you, you're pro art. I think, I think you're under, you're underselling yourself. You've been on HN for 10 years and you, you took the Harvard intro course. I think you're fine. I, th I think I think you're underselling yourself. I think I'm telling you, I've I've worked with a ton of product managers and project managers, and I'm telling you, you probably know like way more than the average if you've been on HN for ten years and and have an IT background and and took the intro that online intro CS course. Be a DJ pressure. <laughs> First, change the name. No, I'm kidding. kidding. But uh, learn like learn Python. Yeah, no art. Yeah, just just do it. Just get get a job in in as a product manager. You're more than positioned for that on the technical level. They're probably gonna. You, in fact, I would worry more. I don't know your how your progression into getting that job, but I'd worry more about being really good at um, at product manager interviews because I know those can be a little like they give you scenarios, and those can be a little difficult at larger companies. I'd be worried more about that. The soft skill stuff is more so probably what you need to worry about. If, if like you've been on HN for 10 years, like you know the lingo. There's not a see. I think part of like career is realizing there's no secret like thing. And you're and the more you just position yourself well, like being on H, HN or learning a course or whatever, talking to people like like me and like streams and stuff like that, the more you're realizing, oh, like like the more you do stuff like that, you just are in the inside eventually <laughs> it's a mental shift you know what i mean like there's a there's this mental thing where it's like oh i actually am like an engineer or j engineer jason yeah yeah dj pressure you gotta just start coding that's how you understand coding better you gotta start coding you watch it like a thousand. You should watch the videos, right? I mean, if you like them, like they're cool. Use them as a companion piece. But the main thing you should be doing is just like you don't have to watch any of those videos, any of the videos I had to learn to code. To learn to code, you just code. I'm showing you the way. <laughs> you should like it. Like, uh, like really try to solve a ton of problems. Um, and get used to like thinking of a project it could be super simple. It could be like, I want to make a command line tool. When is it too late to start coding when you're dead? Scott Becker grin. Are you telling me what to do, Scott? <laughs> is, oh, oh, is grin a thing? When is it too late to start coding? Um, it's when you're dead, I guess. Like, what was it? Because if you were dead, you wouldn't be able to do anything. I made a password generator chat to your I'm just having to it, explain the code to me. Oh, that's 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 awesome, Art. That's cool. Does it work? Oh yeah, gr is Grin? What is Grin? That reminds me of something. Being here is already a lot. Like, yeah. Just talking to people that are like engineers is huge. That helped me a ton. Helped me a ton. Like, like a lot. Just like talking to people that were also learning. If you're choosing the stream instead of... <laughs> Thanks, Florian. Yeah. No, I think like... Edu being educated on stuff. Oh wow, it's it's hosted on GitHub too. That's that's really cool, and it's all done in ChatGPT. 
Yeah, man, this stuff's powerful. Yeah, like surrounding yourself with the perfect silo of information, like a, a beautiful echo chamber of the of, of information. And then you go out in the world and you make it even better and better. But you're not, not you don't want to hide yourself. I'm just saying, like you want to not echo maybe echo chamber isn't a great thing, but you want your like interface to the world, the how you get information. You want it to be like what you like. Is trust law a better name than DJ Pressure? Yeah, trust law sounds like you're like scheming people. Oh, the Discord? Trust law? It's like, oh, this guy's like kind of scheming a little bit. It sounds like, it, like if your name was Trust Law, I'd be like, well, I'm not obviously not going to trust trust that. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I'm checking it out now. All right, that's cool. It's not, so it gives a, it's a generate a password. Then copy the clipboard. And this like works. Let me Let me see if that copied it. Yeah, copied it. That's that's really cool. Wow. And this was all generated? Like, you didn't code any of this? Scheming? <laughs> yeah, if your name... Yeah, DJ Pressure. I would trust you more with your name DJ Pressure than Trust Law. If your name was Trust Law, I'm like... I'm like... Uh, it's a, like... I'm just like, wow. Like, that's... Like, that's like... Uh, your name is like doctor give me money or doctor i save lives i'm coding at the same time as jared i'm just listening to the dude i was coding the whole time oh yeah florian what are you coding what are you working on yeah just like just build stuff just build stuff that's what's up that's what are you working on Oh yeah, so all that code, so you didn't write any of that code and it's a, that's really cool. That's really cool. That's so cool that, that you can just like right now not, because a password generator is a thing that does something. Before you could just like mock up sites with like, you know, WordPress or whatever. Now you can literally say, build me a password generator. I think that's awesome. Anyone scared of that? I don't know. Virtual girlfriends, Florian, please, please post in the Discord. Florian's do Florian, you're a madman. You're making Florian stream. You stream. That's a more interesting stream. <laughs> you're building virtual girlfriends right now. <laughs> Dude, that's like that's hilarious. I'm a middle school teacher writing rappers around LMs to make my life easier, experimenting with ways to give instant feedback to students. Interesting. Is that so hold on a sec, second, Scott. First you just post grin. And now you're like, I'm I'm just gonna like talk to my students with AI. <laughs> Scott, what, what what's going on? What's going on with you here? So so like it how many students do you have like a million students what if the ai is wrong the diversity in jared streams is yeah, right like what like where is where you how are you guys coming from like where are you guys coming from there's gonna be a, a dude that no a hundred or so i guess that's a lot of students but like that could be hairy dude that could be hairy i'd watch out like politically hairy i don't know like what if like instant feedback you may have to check that feedback llms can be they can hallucinate yeah you gotta check you know what i would do scott i would have another prompt if you can automate this Oh, you're writing rappers. So are you coding this like an AI agent to do this? Because if you are, I would write another prompt to check if the answer is like appropriate or something. I was trying planet scale tonight. I just realized there's no foreign keys. Wait, what's planet scale? 
middle school teacher compete with it. Yeah, of course, DJ. And also, I'm messing with the name too. I'm just just messing around, competing with it. Yeah, yeah, no, like that's it's really cool you're doing that, Scott. But I would just I would just try to have some like some something in your pipeline that's like checking the answer before it goes out. Let's see. Should I push or go back to postgres? What do you mean push? Like planet scale. What's planet scale? So is planet scale like super base? Is it like a is it just like some like open like cloud like database? Cuz if there's no foreign keys, that's horrible yeah if you're using some cloud it's a serverless it doesn't have if it doesn't have server if it's a mysql uh serverless db and it doesn't have foreign keys like just use superbase oh for scaling without thinking though what well, what do you need to scale Oh, pushing through the pain. Oh. Um, if you use Postgres, you'll be be able to, and you still need something uh, like on like in the cloud. Then you can just do things locally in Postgres, and then use Superbase because Superbase uses Postgres, and it has foreign keys. Like, what's the like? What's the point of? setting up a cloud SQL server if they don't like what even is planet scale planet scale that's wild oh i see so they're just gonna charge you for a ton of instances or not instances but i'm guessing they're just charging you for where the tables are stored and they probably just share a bunch of indexes across different instances. They probably just index whatever you have. And then, and then they, and then for some reason you can't do foreign keys, which makes sense. Cause if this is scaled really well, then it might be set up in a way where let's see, I was just, so is mainly using small projects. If you want to learn it to land a job or create a project that has potential for scale, I think Superbase nor, nor Firebase are the way. Yeah. Wait, nor? <laughs> you using, using this, this Boolean logic here, Reed. Yeah. I. Superbase can scale fine. Superbase can scale fine. I've seen it. Yeah, I, I've seen it scale fine. The, the thing with like scale when using something like Superbase is just having intelligent indexes and a really smart front end server, a really smart um, uh, load balancer. Smart load balancers can deal with a lot of data. Like, I don't know how many queries are, are you do you need to to have? Are you are you scaling the queries? Or are you scaling the the size? Scaling the size isn't a big deal. Um. Oh, you're just trying it out. Oh, yeah. Oh, you use that usually. Yeah, that, that's cool. F Firebase, I feel like Firebase, I just don't like the API for it personally. I don't like NoSQL that much anyway. I mean, I, I've done mo too much MongoDB. But like I, like MongoDB aggregate queries are, I used to love them and then I like, learn SQL more and I was like what am I doing basically you implement the foreign key relationships from your app you oh okay okay I, I see I see what you're saying I mean neither are suitable for high scale yeah no they're not they're not yeah Reed you're right yeah neither of them are suitable for if you want a high scale enterprise level thing it's not but also if you want a high scale thing there's barely any tools that are that are cheap you want to say you want to just use AWS for like everything, and then spend however much money that's going to be, which is going to be a lot, um, because you need a ton of different services. 
you need microservices. You need an ability to set up microservices instantly. And you need a, build, a way to connect all of them. Basically, you implement the... Uh, Jerry, off topic, who's your favorite musical artist? Um, I don't really have a favorite. I listen to a lot of different things. Like, I listen to, like, a lot of different... So, I someone asked on another stream. Let me get my... Um, Spotify. Yeah, like um yeah, like there's so like there's a like Kanye and Tupac and Nirvana and like uh Led Zeppelin, a lot of strokes, a lot of smashing pumpkins, cage elephant, and then like random anime stuff, and then like some like arcade fires in here pink floyd a lot of clash i like the clash a lot of like basic stuff i don't i don't really and then like recently i've been listening to a ton of um yeah like evidence is, is cool i don't typically have them on like playlists but whenever it comes up i'm like yeah yeah i was yeah oh oh they have a like a they have versioning, they have Git versioning for the database. Oh. Tupac, bro, <laughs> you must be old. Uh I'm 27. Yeah. The um, I mean, he he I was born a month before he died. Are you lit are you streaming just for the six of us? I've been watching you a few weeks and really like what you do. Yeah pretty sure <laughs> like yeah i'm just streaming uh you gotta learn french and listen to what's pnl i don't even it, learning french sounds like a whole thing whenever i hear french i'm like i don't even know like what that is yeah like um i don't even know whenever I hear French, I'm like, it's too fancy for me. It's like, as you do, as you do, and like, even when it's angry, it's, it's like, it's like fancy. It's like, you're getting kicked out of somewhere. Whenever anyone says anything, you're like, Oh, I'm, am I in the wrong place? That's the only thing I have to say when someone's speaking French. Oh, I, on the, to, the accent is hard for English speaking. It it get to forget. <laughs> yeah, like I can't. Also, thanks, uh, Scott. Yeah, I'm 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 uh, happy you, you like the the videos. You gotta share it, guys. Share it. Get it out there. YouTube. Um, sometimes I think I'm not uh, PC enough for the algorithm. They they'll sh they'll like boost it, and then it'll get really good. Like impressions and then and then they'll they'll not <laughs> yeah read i'm like I'm like i'll hear someone speaking french and i'm like oh i'm sorry did am i parked in the wrong place i'll move <laughs> it's like oh i i don't belong here it's a little it's like and i feel like french they have a very aloof like I feel like you have to be like smoking a cigarette if you're if you're French. Like it's very like artistic. I think that's I'm that's this is my dumb American uh, perspective. But Americans, we got a ton of cool. I feel like our um I feel like our accent just is the accent. Is that that's really American thing to say, right? Whenever when like when I hear American, I'm like, oh yeah, that's just how people talk. It's like super simple. It's not. It's like, yeah, that's you go to the South. I think Southern accents are like, I don't know, something about Southern accents. They're just like a lot of the French. Oh, they're not true. What do you what, what's not true? Like, I feel like whenever I hear American accent, I'm like, yeah, that's like the like when I hear other accents, I'm like, oh, you guys are pretending and, and we're. Like, yeah, British, yeah, dude, the British accent. Whenever I hear British accents, I'm like, that's not real. There's no way that's real. 
Like you have to be trying. It's like, hello, hello, I'll go to Liverpool. No, <laughs> it's not real. Hello, governor. And, and now, and and now we go and and get the soccer ball. Like I don't even. It's like there's so many regions, and they all sound ridiculous. I said soccer ball. Soccer makes no football makes more sense than soccer. To be and I love American football, but like, dude, if a woman speaks in British accent, I want to know. <laughs> no, it's like, it's like, yeah, yeah, roll, roll, roll. It's like, it's like there's no way that's how you talk i feel like it's a little yeah like when when people talk yeah like if a, like a girl's talking a british accent it's like oh can we just like talk like normally for a second <laughs> it's am i being ethnocentric i remember hearing that word when i was like a teenager they're like you don't want to be ethnocentric luke would be fuming right now i know luke would be losing his mind right now where's luke he's a great addition to the chat just total just chaos <laughs> just pure chaos no oh wait no he's he's from liverpool that's what you're saying yeah 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 i know what you mean right right no, but like the Liverpool. Please, sir, can I have some more? Yeah, no offense to the British people. Yeah, no offense. No, no offense, British people. No offense. A little bit. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, you know. I, you know. The Americans and British, there's a... You're a typical U.S. I know I'm a typical U.S. citizen. I know. I've been to enough countries to know, like, I'm. this is my place. It's not. Like, I'll go to, like, a European country, and I'm like, oh, so you guys just, like, you guys, like, like your government here? <laughs> or, or not even that. It's like, oh, you guys just do, like, the... Like, I feel like in America, it's just normal for people to be like, oh, man. everything, like, oh, the, the man, they suck. Like, do you guys, like, like your health care? <laughs> You're basic. I know. I know, Florian. I know. You're considered in the high echelon of American that actually know other cultures. Um, I went to, a, when I was 20, I traveled. I, I went to, <laughs> I know, I know. I am basic. I take it with pride. I went to like 15 countries. I like quit a job and went to like, and I, I went to some Middle East places, Middle Eastern places. It was, um, the thing with the basic, I relish that though. No, I know. I, I know. I know. You're just messing around. I feel like so many Americans are egocentric and they know nothing about the world. Yeah. Cause we're the best read. Why would we need to know about other countries when we're the best? Ringard? What's Ringard? Well, the thing is that every country has its own like weird flavor. The one thing is Americans, we're super degenerate right now. It's basic in French. Oh, oh. <laughs> um... He just means like, uh, oh, basic in French is, uh, is Ringard. Yeah. I think Florian just means like, he was just saying, it's like, I, I, I don't know, like, um, the best way to translate that culturally, um, just being super like, like a, like Frappuccino girls, like airy kind of, yeah. Typical. Yeah. 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 the um yeah it's so fun because yeah every country you know america's like falling what do you do for a living or what is something you're really good at um like coding <laughs> um 
Yeah, like dumb blonde idiot goes something more similar is more similar to lame or has been. Oh, interesting. So people say Ringard is like an insult. So yeah, I yeah, DJ Pressure. I uh I've been a software engineer full time since I was like 18. That's what I do. And uh right now I'm starting a company. I'm uh doing these streams and doing contracts. I work out a lot. I do a lot of fitness really. I lift. I snowboard in the winters now. Um I I don't know. I walk. <laughs> um I'll be getting into into surfing recently. I like that. But right now I'm like in the zone. I feel like once you turn like that 25 to like 30, early 30s time, you just get in the zone. For depending who you are, obviously. You can also just die from fentanyl, but like that's dark. But I'm saying for like a lot of people, like if you if you keep your drive and stuff, I feel like you just get into the zone. And right now I'm just in the zone. I'm just like cr like working crushing if the u.s is is uh falling so is french really the whole world is so tied to the american economy the enemy bad happens in america the whole world will feel it wow i mean yeah i believe that i didn't know i know france is um well really it's um the federal reserve as soon as that what well, we don't have to get in that on youtube but uh as soon as the federal reserve started um you know printing the money and the Americans essentially inherited the wealth of the world by not being overseas during all the World War One and World War Two, and like the fact that we weren't destroyed and everyone else was, we kind of just like inherited this insane like, and we also are super resource. Uh, we have a surplus in, in resources. We just like became this like crazy superpower, and now it's falling and the USD is falling and the debt system's falling and because money is just debt. Like it's just, it's the IOU notes and we can't just keep printing money. That's why like the globalism thing, I'm so critical of it. Cause it's like, like as soon as you have globalism, globalism, you just don't have nations. You have like super nations that just dominate other nations. And like, you want to have like thriving people like nations that are strong and they keep, you know, to their own <laughs> little protectionist. Um, yeah, you could be doing the typical American European or speaking. So weird, typical blonde California accent. The vocal, I don't even know how to do the vocal. It's like, yeah, Europeans are so weird. I think that's uh, the vocal for, I think so bad. Whenever you like hear an American girl with vocal fry, do not date her, please. Promise you it's a bad idea. It's a bad not that didn't she doesn't have vocal fry for good reasons. I'll tell you. That's that's not that's not good. Yeah, super sassy. The amount of resource America has is mind blowing. I always tell yeah, no, I, I know, yeah. Yeah. The um yeah, it's gonna right now it's a really good time to invest in your land. So how does the land, whether it's farming, whether it's people that know construction, people that are in trades that have to do with working the land, it's really good to invest in that. Um, because when economies fall, people get t more tied to the land and less to the bs jobs and the funny money that are downstream from the systems that work off that land you know what i mean that's why my startup is like we're doing in information retrieval like for people in the trades like so to answer questions about textbooks and things like that because it's like you're servicing something that's like tied to like the basics and that's what software really should be is it should be this like it should supercharge the people like the real work that's that's what makes it beautiful yeah america on top for real even though most people in america yeah dude everyone the npc has gotten bad 
there's it's it's gotten bad. There's so many NPCs, dude. It's like, like the it's like oh I believe the current thing whatever the new thing that makes me socially accepted. It's like dude, and you'll see guys doing it too. Like guys being like oh yeah, I just like I'm not even to say it on YouTube, but it's like. I just like uh, what like whatever the new thing is, and now I'm like uh, that makes me good. It's like um, no. <laughs> I mean, no offense, but life in the West has gotten so easy that it led to this current degeneracy. No, it's you're you're right, Reed. No, no offense taken. That's exactly what it is. Life gets easy, and it's like that's why. Why do you think people like? jocko and like all these like influencers around discipline and hard work or because that's like uh discipline like nourishes your soul as a man every time you struggle and overcome it it nourishes your soul dude that that's so funny florin we, we that's what we're talking about in schemology i think yeah jack and i yesterday were talking about how people like chat GBT is just the ultimate NPC. It's like, you can't say that. <laughs> Florian, if you, can you post when you finish your virtual girlfriends, can you post on uh, the discord? I want to like run through it on schemology. I think that'd be hilarious. <laughs> no, the, no. Like the West has gotten so like, like as soon as your life, that's why when you're like a young man, like when, like you shouldn't domesticate yourself super quick. Honestly, you shouldn't even really be dating until you're like in your mid twenties, in my opinion. It's so you have so much to do to build yourself, and and dating doesn't really build yourself much. It's not like a. In fact, like if you like get too focused on a girl earlier like too young it actually messes you up i would suggest like honestly just wait until mid-20s even 30 like or maybe i don't know depends but like because it's just you have so much to do you have so much to like work on and like develop yourself i'm glad that i chose to do that um i mean obviously you know no one's fair. I, I i had times where i fell away from the path but uh, it's it's like this this whole like people from the West need to come and spend a week here in third world countries, no tourism, nothing, just real life. I swear they will get back running and thanking God. No, I'm sure, dude. I'm sure. No, there's like the entitlement is uh is huge. The entitlement's huge. Like like uh, especially when it comes to like convenience. It's like I can right now just get shipping so easy for me, you know. And everyone thinks they're uh, they're special here, but it's like when life hits you, as I'm sure you know, it's like you realize, oh wait, I'm not I'm not that special. For one week, it's hard to keep that in your mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. True, true. It will, what's interesting is um, if people did do that, like live in a third world country for a week, they would just see it as like a fun, the, the young, a younger guy would see it as like a fun rager thing. Like as soon as if people know in their mind, they can go back to normalcy fairly quick, then they don't really adapt. I think adaptations comes to realizing there's no one coming. Like if you're in a situation where you're like, oh no, like I'm actually just there's there's no hope it's like that's when it wouldn't be a not that not that living in there one means there's no hope but it's like i'm saying the shift mentally um real mental shifts happen when like the outcomes like in your future just changes like the trajectory in your life just changes i would recommend falling in love when you're young the pain after my first girlfriend was such a good fuel in my 20s no the, the, what you're saying there's a benefit to that i've had a similar experiences like there's a 
you do develop a lot when you have that, but without a value structure in your culture, a lot of guys will get that girlfriend and then think that, and then like after they, the break up like uh, happens or if it happens, like they'll just like not, they'll think that their life's over because they teach men to be that like, like in our society, they teach men that your life is just to like get married and all that. So a lot of people, they think their purpose is over and that they don't have meaning after they lose their girl. And it's a, it's a weak mindset because your purpose has, has very little to do with, with like, I mean, that's important. It's an important part of life, but it's not your purpose. Purpose is like forged through blood. <laughs> like you, you find your purpose in, in, in real struggle. And you, when you come out of it and, uh, it's like a, it's a, it's a battle. I feel men need to stop being overly be open to women and express. No, dude, they're ruthless. No, dude, read your, you're right. This whole, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you said it. This whole, like, um, like being super emotional and, and like in front of like women, like cultural thing, I think is super toxic. It leads to the irony is, and I know a lot of girls may hear that and think the opposite and think that, oh no, more men need to be, because I've had a lot of girls like mention like friends and, and girlfriends, like mention things like that about how guys in the West need to be more open and feel it. They never actually like that. They want you to be like a, like a rock. Like the, yeah, you don't want to be like, cause they're like that. <laughs> like you don't want to be like the reality is that they want to be um they want you to sort of like treat them in a in sort of like a they want you to be very strong and solid to the world and they want you to care for them in a way that makes them feel safe that's kind of what they they want to feel safe is what they mean when they're communicating that until we do what they say and they yeah exactly yeah it's like it's like uh like they'll say that they don't want you to be soft. That's I promise you. I promise you. They want you to understand what they're feeling when they're saying that, and to and to validate them for that. They don't want you to actually be like I promise you. I promise you. Like the like it's really good to learn how to make them feel safe and, and good when they're communicating things like that, and not just be like, oh, I just have to do what she says now. You got to be your own man in this world. And, you know, you can not agree with what I'm saying, too. I'm not saying I'm not trying to tell anyone what to, what to do. I'm just saying, like, that's such a problem in the West. Like, and it's through media, too. It's like these movies. It'll be like Sleepless in Seattle or something. People will watch that. What's like a new version of that? They don't want to talk to chat. <laughs> yeah. The idea that they can love unconditionally. Yeah, no, it's like. If you're not a rock, if you're not bringing the order, as, men, as the male force in the world does, the sun, right? It's like rises every day. The sun isn't crying, you know? Uh, but try tracking when the moon's full, right? I'm making a, so it's like m women are the moon and, and men are the sun. But it's like, uh, it, it's it's true though. It's like, the, you gotta be like, like stoic you, you don't want to be like um like oh no like i'm just really like like upset and, and i mean you, you could be honest but like you know don't like lie but it's like yeah the, the unconditional oh yeah no but these hollywood movies are just like oh yeah like the he the man like cried and he made his life a, about pleasing her my husband is not for sharing. He never tells what's wrong. He doesn't talk to me because when you were young, you were sharing and they saw it was counterproductive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Dude, Floyd, you're right. Exactly. It's like those like youthful love things. It teaches you to be that guy who later on. That's like, Oh, he never, why does he never tell me what's wrong? It's cause he's been through war. <laughs> it's like, what is my, it's like, what is my husband? He never shares. He never tells me what's wrong. It's because he's been through the, 
he's he's fought these battles before trust me we're easily replaceable for them but we have the option to flip it to our own benefit yeah yeah maybe we should have a stream where we just talk about stuff like this i, don't, I, don't, I feel like this stuff is super valuable now it's lots of lots of lost sheep and i'm not like putting my myself above or anything but i just see a lot of um I think it's Hollywood movies. It's a lot of cultural that's like, oh, you have to be, and, and I get it. When I was like younger, I definitely fell for a lot of the traps. It's like, oh, you have to uh, be super overly sensitive. And, and if you're really sensitive, then you will be rewarded with the ultimate prize of a woman's attention. And it's like, so you wonder why a ton of kids are just killing themselves now and and getting it's because they think their life purpose is to be fulfilled on a like dating app or to be like ch picked out of a, a lineup or whatever and not to go crush <laughs> dj pressure yeah i i can't say that on, i can't say that on youtube but there's a there's truth to what you just said <laughs> nevertheless both sides are filled with DJs now, either liberals or the, or well, actually, I won't even, or the R P I L E D. They're both clones and can't, yeah, dude. This whole, like, I'm not gonna, um, I'm, do you listen to MFM? I don't know what that is, but like, wait, wait, wait what's that? Well, what's that MF, MFM? But like, um but like uh no Reed, you're right like both sides are just they're capitalizing yeah you're so right because there's the guys that are there's the dating coach people that are grifting off of the malaise of the young man and then there's the uh the liberals i'll just say that are um that are literally just like trying to like call them from society <laughs> that's what it is it's like it's a deep we don't have to get into it. It might, could it be, could it be it's depopulation? We can, we can talk about that. We can talk about that. Um, I don't want to get too conspiratorial. I get that. That's for schemology podcast. I'm not saying every liberal wants that. I'm just saying it's more like a top down approach. My first million. No. Is that, that I should listen to that. You, so both of you guys listen to my first million. It's a business podcast with two guys, Sh Shauna Puri and Sam Parr, talk about random stuff. Are they like, are they cool? Are they based? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's get back to Sue Basin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get back. Let's get back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just, I'm just too impulsive, I think. I'm too. <laughs> is that a good podcast, though? This is for the Discord. yeah can when do you post that it, like uh how do you post can you post a link to maybe like a good podcast episode on the, the discord because i i want to if, if two of you guys listen to that it sounds sounds definitely interesting it's a good pod interesting what's the so nice yeah, I definitely want to want to listen to that. I just realized I, I need to get food. <laughs> All right. Nice hanging out, guys. We can we could talk asynchronously in the in this Discord. Tomorrow I'm going to stream something. I got to think of something cool to build. If you have any ideas, let me know. And they, they interviewed Peter Levels. I don't I don't even know who that is. But All right. See you guys. Adios. Hey, who's Peter Levels? Peace. Take care. See you, man. See you, DJ Pressure. <laughs>